welcome to my channel, Inspiring Joy. I hope you are doing well today. I am recovering from a cold, so I still have a little bit of that nasal sound to my voice, but doing much better. And so today I am going to prepare a beef vegetable soup. It is mid-December here, close to Christmas, and in Ohio, we are getting a bit of a snow flurry kind of day. It's dusting, not much is sticking, but it's just beautiful, and the wind is blowing, and the snow is falling, and it just reminds me of a soup, you know, a very cozy, comfort kind of day. And our son's coming home from college today for the holiday, and our other son will be in town tomorrow, and our daughter's home, so... Tonight it's going to be soup with some fresh um, bread, crusty bread that we'll bake in the oven, and then maybe a salad as well, depending on the preferences of the kiddos. But let me go through the soup as I make it, and I'll also put in the description of this video the actual directions or instructions for the soup. So as I get started, I'll explain what I'm putting together and uh, we'll go from there. You'll need about three hours to plan ahead for this. So just make sure you leave yourself enough time. You can probably do it in the crock pot. You'll want to sear your meat first if you choose to use beef, or you can leave beef out and just do the vegetable and beef broth if you like, or just do it all veggie. But this in particular, I'm doing as a beef vegetable soup for protein and winter hardiness and something yummy for us here. And we like beef in our, in our soup. So. So some of the other ingredients it does have, um, it calls for a chuck roast, stewed tomatoes, tomato sauce, beef broth, salt, pepper to taste if you wish, paprika, six large carrots, eight Idaho, eight Idaho potatoes, although sometimes I like to use the Yukon Gold, so I'll decide what I fill up to. A head of cabbage, or at least a half of one, a can of corn and a can of green beans. I am somewhat doubling this just to make enough for five of us and some leftovers and just to have enough you know when you have kids at home especially grown children they tend to eat a lot more than younger children certainly so and i'm all for that eat as much as you want okay so let's go ahead and get started and we're going to start out by searing the chuck meat on the stove so let's go ahead and get started Okay, so to start with, I added some olive oil to my pot, my pan, and I'm going to turn on my stove top to heat up my oil just a bit. And then I have my chuck roast, which I'm going to set in the bottom of my pan and wash my hands. And so while your meat is searing, you'll want to open your cans of stewed tomatoes. These are just, um, you can use whatever brand you want. I just picked up these from our local grocer. And you'll want to add one can, and again, I'm doubling a couple of these things. So I'm gonna do two of the stewed tomatoes. And I'll include all of these instructions in my description. I'm just kind of going through them now with you as I make this. So once you sear both sides of your meat, you'll want to take that off the burner so it doesn't continue to cook. Then you want to add your can of stewed tomatoes. And in my case, I'm adding two cans of stewed tomatoes. Then you want to add one can of, or 14 ounces, of low sodium beef broth. So let me go ahead and grab that, and my tomato sauce. Roughly half of this can. I don't want 
too much red sauce in there. Okay, so about a half of that. And if you want to add the full thing, that's fine. It's up to you. Okay, so I have beef stock here, and I'm going to go ahead and add, it calls for 14 ounces, so I'm going to do half of my container, because it's a 32. I don't want to go too much into that. Okay, maybe a little bit more, just because I am doing more veggies as well. Okay, so... Once you've added your stewed tomatoes, tomato sauce, and beef broth, you add water to two inches from the top of your pot. So about two inches to the top will be water. You're gonna add salt, pepper, and paprika. Bring all of that to boil, and then you'll wanna cook on medium to high for about 30 minutes. So let me go ahead and add my water, salt, pepper, and paprika, and we'll bring that to a boil. And it's paprika to taste. I'm using a smoked paprika. I like the flavor of that a little bit better than regular paprika. All right, and then we'll add a little pepper and salt. <coughs> and I always think that people can add salt and pepper on their own as well as they eat the dish. So I don't like to add too much depending on your audience who's going to eat, any family members who can't have salt, I try to leave that out as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our water and then we'll stir it up. I think in total that was about four or five cups of water. This is a six quart container that I have, six quart pot. So depending on the size of your pot, or depending, will depend on how much water to add. Put this back on to this burner here. Turn my burner back on. And you know, I have my meat at the very bottom, so I'm really going to just stir in all of the ingredients that I added to the meat. Get that kind of swished around in here. Looks like my meat is moving around as well, which is great. So we'll get that stood up in here. Okay. So we have that on high. So as soon as that boils, then we'll move it down to medium for about 30 minutes. I'll probably put a lid on it just to hold in the heat and watch it from there. Okay, so that is part one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the prep for part two. Part two is, we're going to add carrots, potatoes, and cabbage. So I wanna go ahead and cut up those. The other items are canned items, which will be easy to add to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my carrots and potatoes and the cabbage and prepare that. So it'll be a half a head of cabbage, six to eight Idaho potatoes, and four to six large carrots. I'm looking at the recipe in front of me. So yeah, so carrots, potatoes, cabbage. Let's cut up that, we'll have that ready to go. So in the 30 minutes this finishes simmering, we'll add that and the corn and the green beans as well. And then we'll simmer for about an hour. Um, actually probably about two hours from there. So we'll add the carrots and potatoes, we'll cook for an hour, then we'll add the cabbage, cook for another hour, and then about 30 minutes before you add the green beans and the corn. So there are steps to this, you know, quite frankly, could you add it all together and just let it sit for two or three hours or hit, you know, be in a crock pot? Probably. First, this is the first time I've made it, so I'm following it as it's written just because I don't know if it would taste different otherwise. But if you've made a lot of these beef vegetable soups in your time, feel free to do it however it works for you. All right, so it is on high. Let me get the other veggies, carrots, potatoes, and cabbage, and we'll start cutting this up.
Okay, so the carrots and potatoes and cabbage are now in the pot. I'm, out, I'm now going to add the uh, sweet corn as well. It's one can, I did drain it, and I think I was gonna add two cans to double my recipe, but I don't really have the room in this pot, so I'm really just going to add the one, plus we have the other veggies too also, so I think that'll be just enough. And then one can of cut green beans, drained as well. As you can see, this is a very full pot of veggies. Amazing broth and fresh veggies, canned veggies, broth, and meat. And my canned veggies, I always like to use organic if I can, or I'll any, all of my veggies are organic, and my meat is grass-fed organic if I can get it. So at this point we're going to let this simmer for about an hour and a half and then we'll come back and check it and if everything has cooked down and the veggies are soft and the meat is done and all of those pieces and parts, everything looks good, then we'll go ahead and serve it. And I also picked up a hard loaf of uh, French bread from our local store in the bakery. So we will have the, the crusty bread uh, which I'll warm up in the oven with some butter. Maybe a little garlic butter, I'm not sure yet, because there are a lot of flavors in the soup, so I don't want to take away from that. But we'll do the crusty bread with our beef vegetable soup, and we'll see how it tastes. So in about an hour and a half, I'll reconnect on the video and give you an update. soup is fantastic. All of the flavors melted together after the two or so hours that it finished cooking together and simmering on the stove. I hope you give it a try. As I mentioned, I'll include all of the ingredients and the process to cook it and put it together in my description in my video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Take care and stay warm. Bye now.